If you have done any renders in the Cycles render engine, you already know that it can produce excellent results, but there is a price to pay. The problem is noise, and the length of time the noise takes to clear to an acceptably low level. Optimizing renders for speed is a big subject, but you have to start somewhere, and we'll start with settings in the render panel. To do this, I'll be comparing renders of a typical test scene, similar to a Cornell box you may have seen before. I set up the box to be more like a real scene, using materials that are at least slightly reflective, and I've included a drinking glass to illustrate the limits of the optimizing process. There is no need for you to reproduce this scene, you can follow along without working in Blender. Your best option is to use your own scenes for test renders. Before we go on, let's take a quick look at the materials, so we know what we're looking at. The opaque materials are all basically the same, except for colour. For instance, the red material assigned to the cone. We go to the node editor, and here it is. A simple plastic surface with blurry reflections created with a mix of diffuse and glossy shaders. Now the glass material. It's even simpler, only a glass shader with default settings. This is all that is required for realistic glass, provided the object is modeled correctly and the render settings are generous enough. Another way to create glass is with a special node setup that isn't as accurate but renders a lot faster. This is usually called architectural glass because it tends to be used for window panes in architectural renders. The technique can be used on any glass if the glass object is not the main focus of the image. Here is the simplest node setup you can have for architectural glass. Diffuse rays from the light path node control the mix of glass and transparent shaders. For best results, shadow rays should control the mix as well, but for our demonstration this simple version is fine. On to the render panel. We'll be looking at the effect of different settings for sampling and light paths. We will use the default sampling integrator, path tracing. The other option, branched path tracing, is an advanced feature of limited application and is not covered in this tutorial. Likewise for the pattern, we use Sobol, the default setting. We won't consider volume sampling at all. Regarding performance settings, I rendered on the CPU. If you are rendering on a GPU, you may want to increase the size of the tiles by a factor of 2 or 4. Here is the first render of the test scene. Samples were set to a high value of 2000, the progressive refine option was switched on, and the render stopped at 5 minutes. In this test, the other render settings are at default values, as set by Blender developers. Because Blender has to work reliably out of the box, the default values are not as optimized as could be. And to keep render times bearable, neither are the settings geared for utmost accuracy. Let's see if we can identify the main reason the default settings are not so well optimized. Notice that transmission and transparency bounces are set quite high in comparison with diffuse and glossy. Notice also that caustics are on. Further, clamp direct and indirect values are at zero. The conclusion is that the default settings are not optimized because of the possibility of glass in the scene. For most scenes without prominent glass, settings can be optimized. We begin by starting at the opposite end. I have chosen the full global illumination menu item, which sets all bounces to 128. If we compare the results with the default settings, we see that the noise is now worse, but not by much. This makes it clear that light bounce values are not going to be central to optimization. Now let's take a closer look. The main difference is in the brightness and saturation of the image, and most importantly in how the glass is rendered. 
The lower number of bounces in the image on the left means fewer reflections and highlights. For glass objects in the background of a scene, this would be quite acceptable. Let's try something else. What happens if we use clamping and filter glossy? I have set these to aggressive but still acceptable settings. Clamp direct to 4, clamp indirect to 3, filter glossy to 6. The glass is now quite inaccurate, but the scene as a whole is much clearer. The noise level is lower and the most difficult noise, the so-called fireflies, is gone. This is despite the fact that core sticks are still on, and that's mostly thanks to the clamping, which simply cuts out brightest light values. The lower the clamping number, the lower the cutoff point, and the more severe the noise reduction. Let's try the same render again, but this time using the glass architectural material and refractive core sticks turned off. Now the glass looks slightly better, because the arrangement of the material causes more light to pass through, despite the severe clamping. It would be quite acceptable if the object was placed in the background of the scene. Notice, however, that the noise level in this render is really no lower than in the previous, even though we've turned refractive caustics off. Yet again, the power of the clamping is made clear. Now, the render is still quite noisy in places. Let's try turning off reflective caustics and reducing the bounces to a lower value, say 4. Well, quite a difference. The render is noticeably darker, the noise is reduced, and the glass is dark to the point of being opaque in places. This isn't an acceptable render, we've clearly gone too far. So let's turn reflective caustics back on. That alters the lighting quite a bit, and some of the noise has returned. Given the difference in lighting, the extra noise is acceptable. If we don't have glass in the scene, these then are our minimum optimized settings. Before wrapping up, let's take a look at a few close-ups. Here I've set transparent and transmission bounces to zero, so the glass is opaque. We see that in the left render, clamping is off and the highlights are bright. In the right render, using our low clamping values, the highlights are noticeably duller, but there's also less noise. This is borderline acceptable and serves as a valid starting point. Another closer view showing the effect of reflective caustics on lighting of the scene. Noise levels are hardly any different, but the lighting is clearly better when this option is switched on. Next, a closer view of the noise and the fireflies if clamping is off. The comparison makes it quite clear that clamping should be used. And finally, the inaccurate reflections caused by filter glossy settings greater than 1. You can see that at the value of 6, the inaccuracy is very obvious, much weaker at the value of 2, and practically non-existent at the value of 1. It must be said though, in some scenes the inaccurate reflections can look better than the accurate ones by suggesting lighting where there is none. So it is worth experimenting with this setting. And that brings us to our summary. Clamping values are the most important. Direct set to 4, indirect to 3. Lower values are not recommended as they will obliterate the highlights. Higher values will clamp less, resulting in brighter highlights, more noise and longer render times. The zero value turns clamping off, something you may need if rendering close-ups of demanding glass objects such as diamonds. Bounce settings mostly affect brightness of the image. As a minimum starting point, I recommend they are all set to 4, except for volume. Minimum bounces should be set to 1. Do not set minimum bounces to 0, as that will increase noise in dark areas. If you don't like very bright indirect lighting, diffuse bounces can be set to as low as 2, depending on the scene and the look you want to achieve. Reflective core sticks should be on for accurate lighting, refractive core sticks off. If you have glass objects in your scene, use an architectural glass node setup for acceptable glass without refractive core sticks. For proper glass, turn on refractive core sticks and increase transmission and max bounces to at least 12. Finally, the setting with the least effect, filter glossy. 
set it to 1, but values up to 6 can be useful despite or because of inaccurate reflections. Remember that none of this is set in stone, and as always, your mileage will vary. Don't hesitate to test and experiment on your own scenes. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope it has been useful. Please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe for future updates.